Okay, so since it's been such a long time, obviously I made some form changes and hopefully gotten better, which distance wise I have. So if that's the only way to show that I've improved, then yes, I have. So I'm gonna show a little form update, my regular form, and then I kind of have like a James Conrad really long run up that I've been incorporating for really long shots, just get more speed on them. I probably still need to work on my brace and incorporating my legs there better, um, which I will keep working on. Um, definitely has gained me a lot of distance and I know it's really windy which is crazy but I'm going to show those two forms and don't look at the disc because it is windy and will be blowing my disc into the ground but just you can see my form to see what has changed. I got to show this just because it's funny. I don't know if it's supposed to look like it does but it does look like So I'm out here on the course practicing. It is extremely windy, so sorry if the audio is jacked up and I'm gonna try to hold the phone closer so that it doesn't mess up with it as much, but it probably will. And it also screws up my throws, so that makes it harder, but you need practice in the wind and just practice as much as possible. For me, it's like every day I don't practice, I feel like I get worse. Like I have to keep upping and upping myself or else I kind of start dropping off, I feel like. Which, I mean, that's obvious, but I feel like I drop off quicker than some people. Like, I really have, it's not, like, ingrained in me always. I have to keep working and working to keep myself at the same skill level, not just to keep it rising. Obviously, you keep a little bit of your fundamentals and whatever. It doesn't take as much to come back the next time, but... Okay. So, it's been a while since those last videos were filmed. I know I posted a couple recently. Those were filmed, like, eight months ago, so... A lot has changed since then in my disc golf game and journey. So, starting today, I'm gonna start posting, I'm gonna keep trying to start posting more and start filming again. I just had to edit those and post those other videos to get them out of there and figured why not have them out there. So, I have made a lot of improvements. I've been working hard and doing a lot of field work and putting. Putting can't really show exact improvements but in confidence level in tournaments I felt way better and uh, I've made, started making longer putts just in general so in tournaments and I just have been able to step up the putts and be like okay I know I can make this it's just a matter of whether I hit it right now or the wind catches it right or I've been hitting like the top of the cage or the bottom of the band quite often when I'm either over committing or under committing and I'm trying to get that right in the middle, the right amount of commitment. But obviously that's hard and putting is very hard um, to be extremely consistent at. So working on that, my approach game has been needing some work after I was just throwing power shots, power shots, power shots, trying to down tempo and throw little approach shots was hard. So I'm working on that again, doing that every day, pretty much working on my approaches. Um, I'm gonna get a Berg try to help me with that as well so I can throw it harder and it should just drop out of the sky as they say I'm hoping I could be getting fooled and I'm just gonna be throwing a lid that doesn't do anything or glides way too much but either way if it holds the lines that I put it on I'm able to forehand it and backhand it for approaches and hopefully it sits really nice should help my game so that should be coming in soon and that will be helpful along with just working on my approaches and more in general and power wise, so we'll go up from putters. I've been able to hit, probably I'd say I could get 360 pretty consistently for sure. Hit 380 most, of, like if I really wanted to, and then I've hit 400 a few times. So that is nice because I don't really throw mid ranges. So being able to push my putter far enough and still be able to control it really well and it sits good is nice so we're about there so straight up to fairways i have been throwing those like 450 is definitely achievable a little bit past maybe 460 470 sometimes but like 430 to 450 pretty consistent then distance drivers i 
once I do like a normal run up and I started doing kind of more flex shots. So I've been flexing the disc a lot more and giving it a full flight that way instead of trying to hyzer flip and stuff. And I'm getting pretty far distance. Just in my normal run ups, I'm getting 450 for sure. And with a little bit of flex, I can start getting pushing that one even up to closer to 480, 500-ish mark. And then when I do my full James Conrad type run up, I have been able to push the disc 560 a couple times now. 550, I did, I did throw one 550 in a tournament. Um, that was a proud moment. Eagled my, first, uh, probably one of the first legitimate par fives. It was a thousand feet. Um, so, and there's a big power pole in the middle, it's not just wide open. Um, so, I'm getting like 550 on max power, and then 500 to 530-ish more consistently. And, five, and then if I'm really pushing at 550, obviously. Like I'm saying, so my pro level distance is definitely here. I definitely feel like I'm not incorporating my legs quite as much as I need and could be getting even more distance. And I would love to have that perfect Simon Lazat type form, but we're not quite there yet. So hopefully eventually we get there and I will be keep improving and hopefully working on that so that my slower, honestly, like the max distance, do I need 600 feet? every time or very often at all not really but if i can push my putters up even higher and my uh fairways as well that will be very helpful and then every now and then that 600 feet power will be nice you know with throw other things and open up new lines that i haven't seen before so this has been my main goal to see if, if i could get towards that pro level power to know if i should even be trying to um go try to be a pro and now that I've hit that I am feeling way more confident and in my abilities to be able to reach pro level and so I've been working on that joining more tournaments putting myself in more spots to try to get myself eventually onto the pro tour which is my goal so let's talk about that there's been the new 2023 2024 tour standards set out which 2023, basically I had to do something 2022 to qualify or else I'm not gonna get a tour card. Which tour card would be the goal because I don't wanna be guessing, hoping I'd get to sign up for these tournaments and taking the couple spots left to sign up. I mean, if I can't sign up for one closer, then yeah, that'd be cool. But I need some more assurance that if I go out on tour, I'll be able to get into all these events. So, the main goal I need is the 2024 tour card. 2023, I could apply for exemptions, but I don't have anything to really show to, and I think it's like a 1015 or 1020 rating that they would like you to have to apply for it. Don't have that yet because I haven't been able to consistently perform at a high enough level in these tournaments and make the smart decisions when it counted and just really play for my score. I've been kind of playing to, I'm going to try to win and all this, which is good, but I need to be playing smarter and uh, more consistent. Consistency is key. I can have a really good birdie stretch, but then if I have a bogey stretch after, which has been my downfall, it isn't helpful. It evens out to net zero. And so with that, 2024 tour card is what I'll be trying for in this 2023 season. I'll be trying to play events as many weekends as possible. Um, at least 30 to 40, hopefully. And get my rating up. My rating right now is like 960. Not good, because I just haven't been able to consistently have a good tournament round. So, we're getting better, we're getting closer. I've had a couple right next to a thousand rated rounds. And so we'll be doing that more consistently, getting my rating up, and at least to that a thousand level first, so I'd be the first sign up level to get into these bigger tournaments and then eventually maybe if i get up to like 10 15 10 20 i can apply for exemption and get finish out the 2023 season with the tour card that's obviously not very likely um and like really hard to get there's not a ton of people that have a rating so with that the other options to get into the 2024 season 
is with 2023 tour standings. I don't know that I'll get into enough 2023 tour events or want to travel to that many to get the 2024 tour card. So that one's probably not likely. But if I do sign up for an event or two or whatever, if I get like a top five or top 10, um, I will be able to get a tour card for next season. And that's like a majors and elite series that's different. And then if you win a silver series. So if I can get into some of those and have a really good finish, then I could get a tour card. So I will be trying for that if possible, if I can get into one of those events. Or getting my rating up high enough. Or they're doing in 2023 a tour qualification series, which I'll be trying to go and play all those events and hopefully do very well in those. I think if you win, maybe you automatically get a tour card or just if your points are high enough at the end. So maybe I can just win one of those, be done with them and get my tour card and move on. But if not, hopefully my points can be good enough to move me along. So, uh, they haven't put out fully where those tour stops will be in qualifications to enter and start signing up for those, but I need to keep checking that consistently and hopefully be one of the first to sign up so I can secure my spots in those qualification events. But I'm guessing there's gonna be a pretty big field open like if they only have like 50 spots for these tour cards it's not gonna be very I mean it's not really open qualification type thing there should be more like 100 at least maybe 200 even because it's gonna be like multiple days and things to let you be able to qualify so that's probably my most likely chance of getting into to the 2024 tour cards I'll just got hit by an acorn um, so that's what I'll be looking for in going into these qualifications for my 2024 tour card and be grinding, getting my skills up, performing better in tournaments because I mean, I also want to get sponsored. So if I can have some good, uh, tournament finishes to show to the sponsors, as long as getting my rating up and, um, just being better, we'll be a lot better for the sponsors and they'll be more likely to want to sponsor me so I'm gonna keep improving I have improved a lot but got to keep that up work on getting my tour card and getting sponsored and just grinding out this next season uh, to do well and I'll be recording my journey and this is the start of my journey to getting on the pro tour and then winning a world championship maybe I don't know just winning an event would be nice too but getting on the tour is my first goal so I will be documenting that series and trying to find interesting ways to show my improvements and what I've been doing some little vlogs and hopefully posting much more consistently than I have been in the past and better content because when you're better the content is better so I'll be working on that and continuing to improve and uh, let you guys fill you guys in on the journey so another thing to mention is i did actually make my pro tour debut um at the uh, new world championships in jacksonville it was not pretty not not pretty so don't go look that up but i was struggling with a uh big lesson i needed to learn which was I had just switched over like bosses were on a sale so I'm like oh let me get some bosses and these are max weight champion bosses and I'm like oh these things are gonna be stable they're the same flight numbers as a destroyer just one speed faster so they're gonna be stable as junk and I can just rip them as hard as I can and they'll die to the left but because Jacksonville it was the hurricane if you didn't know and winds were not as crazy as they could be, but there was probably 15 mile an hour gusts consistently the entire tournament. And it happened to always be when I was throwing long shots or the stupid island hole. But to my struggle was that I was throwing these bosses, just ripping them because obviously I can throw them farther than destroyers. I'm like, oh, these are awesome. I can throw them farther. There's just a stable, perfect. But I started throwing flex shots a lot and for my max power because i just like the release better of flat to anheuser release um 
So I'm checking these bosses and they fly pretty much the same as a destroyer. But I guess I hadn't heard about this issue. It's not I don't know, issue, but whatever problem that I was having is that the 13 speeds are much more effective by the wind, I believe. Maybe this is just not true, but it was just my experience. And so if I put a little bit of turn on these and the wind catches them right, whereas a destroyer would still maybe drift a little bit, but definitely die back. These things are drifting way to the right and then coming back and dying, but they're 80 feet out of bounds at that point instead of the 20 that a destroyer would be to come back in, maybe 30. So I was having this issue where I kept trusting these bosses to die back in in bounds for me but if a little bit of wind caught them or i just turned them a little bit too much they just drifted over forever and then came back but they're out of bounds because the new world open there was championship there was ob on every single hole cart path on the side and woods on the other side and my ob strokes were insane pretty much all my ob strokes led to a bogey and bogey stroke and that's about how many over par I finished the tournament was my OB strokes so I realized I need to go back to destroyers with a lot of wind and trust them I mean, maybe they're not gonna get quite as much distance but I can at least trust them to come back in the wind more likely I also thought about getting an ape but I think I'm just gonna try to stick to the 12 speeds they seem more consistent and easy to work with and then I can still forehand them as well because I just don't like four hitting 13 speeds. I barely even like four hitting 12 speeds. So I threw OB a lot. I had some really good holes and stretches and then I had some really bad stretches because now that I could throw 500 feet, I'm like, oh, I gotta get all these birdies on the course, all the long holes I have to get. Don't worry about the short holes, get the long holes, which is dumb. And when you play really aggressive, even after you had a bad shot, if you screw that up, you compound your mistake big time. And that's what I kept doing and trying to save the birdies, trying to save the pars, trying to save the bogeys. And it just kept getting worse and worse. And I was just going for shots that I really shouldn't have and should have played it smarter. So I actually played with Brody Smith the first round. That was the only cool person I played with because I started shooting down the leaderboards after that. Um, and I was having, that was actually my best round I played. But I was just trying to kind of keep up with Brody and I'm like, oh, he threw far. Let me throw just as far as he did and see if I can still uh, keep up with him. Because I mean, he's 6'5", I'm six foot, and he's probably got 80 pounds on me. So uh, I'm like, oh, I can throw as far as this guy and I love Brody. So I'm like, let's try to outdo him. And that didn't help me either. Really, I mean, I didn't make too many mistakes because of that, but I did feel like, oh, I need to save this birdie because he's trying to save this birdie or just making the dumb mistakes that he wasn't making quite as much. And I just kept compounding that throughout the tournament, trying to come back into it when really I should have just played smart, take my birdies where I can get them and take the pars when I screwed up. So, that wasn't my the greatest debut ever, but I learned I can play those long golf courses. I just need to worry about the OB more, play smarter, get a better, more consistent distance driver under my belt that, so that I don't have to worry about the wind quite as much. Just let it die to the left every time and take the distance that I can get. Um, and so I think that's about it on the Pro Tour debut, but I'm going to go back to Destroyers, get some nice overstable ones hopefully and just be able to trust those in the wind better and let that help me through the rest of my tournaments and windy rounds too because i mean when it's not windy and it's just normal like i can throw the bosses and i know where they're going they're fine they go really far but once the wind picks up it's like i don't know if i can trust this and i need to be able to be able to trust my disc in the wind to not fade out right when it should be fading left every time so that's something I'm going to be working on and getting some more of those to work in to my bag.